Hey, welcome back to the channel. Coach David here. And today we're talking about seven steps to be remembered by creating unforgettable value, how to make an impact in social situations. So if you were like me, especially when I really got into my career back in the day, into my IT career, I knew that the more that I could up my social skills, my impact, my presence in situations at work, and certainly in social life, that would help too, being in a new city with a new job, New York City at the time. I knew it was important to really make an impact, make that good first impression, be remembered. So if you've ever felt that way, that either you want to make more of an impact or maybe sometimes you just feel invisible because you don't know what to do. Maybe you are struggling with shyness and social anxiety. Maybe you just don't understand what to do. You don't feel shy necessarily or super anxious, you just kind of are confused what to do. Maybe sometimes you feel awkward. Well, that's exactly what we're gonna help you with today. And or if you're, say, decent at it, maybe we can help you take it to another level so that you can be remembered by creating that more impactful value. And if you're a subscriber, good to see you here. If you're new, welcome. My name is David Hamilton. I'm a professional coach, coached in a lot of different areas, but quite honestly, one of my specialties is helping people have that confidence in social situations, whether personally, professionally, right? Work, social, love, life, all of it, so that they can uh, actually increase their success and enjoy it more at the same time. And funnily enough, they actually go hand in hand. The more that I work with people, my clients, that they actually start to learn to enjoy actually providing value, being social, having better presence, all these things, which we'll cover today in this, uh, the more successful they are and the more they enjoy it. It all goes together. It's a really wonderful thing. It's something I did for myself in my career when I worked in IT in New York City. I learned this and I learned some coaching skills. I mashed them all together and here we are. So let's get into this content. Okay, so let's start off with what do we mean by creating impact with value? So in social situations, it's important to focus on how do we impact people with something that they value, right? This isn't about being an authentic, but when people feel impacted by a certain way that we exhibit value, and I'm going to cover all those ways, believe me, all, all some really powerful primary ways you can do it, they remember you, okay? So again, whether you're new to networking in your career, business, um, you want to in, expand your network for social life, you know, career, business too. Uh, if you learn to do this, things can really start to skyrocket for you fast. And so we're going to be talking about those tips, like I said, and let's dive into the first tip right now. So the first tip is presence, developing, cultivating a present. And yes, that also means learning to be present in the moment. This is actually where I start out all my clients foundationally. And the reason is the more relaxed and comfortable and present we are, the more that there's this sense of openness, a sense of ease, the sense of, hey, we don't have our guard up, you know, and you don't have to be perfect with this, right? We all can get nervous or things can go up and down emotionally in social situations, depending what happens if somebody, you know, makes a loud noise or whatever, right? These kind of biological things that can happen. But practicing presence is a huge, huge, huge thing. I do it daily. I um, force <laughs> lovingly my clients to do it. I mean, and what's really great is when people come to coaching these days, when I first started doing this work over a decade ago, uh, nobody meditated. Now, I would say three quarters of the people, maybe even more, have some kind of meditation practice or have had some kind of meditation practice. Maybe they've stopped. Maybe they're doing it currently. Maybe they restarted. You know, they started exploring different personal development things before they came to me. And it's just so wonderful because it may, I don't have to convince them, right? <laughs> it, takes, it took a little more convincing before. Not that it took a lot because, you know, people generally when they sign up, are, they're willing to do what it takes. But it's really, really important. And, and you just feel better doing it. Right. Um, so putting away your phone distractions, you know, we really want to try to do that. Of course, you know, we got smartphones and whatever next iteration we're going to have with uh, integrative and interactive, um, what should we call it? Metasphere stuff, right? Is it Metasphere? Um, what is it? Virtual reality, right? Or integrated augmented reality is coming. A AI stuff will probably tie into that, right? This will never go away. Like, as long as we're in human form and we don't like transport our consciousness into AI or whatever, 
this is going to be a thing, right? This is, this has always been a thing and always will be as long as we're humans. So, and, and there's two ways to look at presence here, right? Because being present is important, but there's also presence. And that's like when you walk in a room, you have a, a vibe, an aura, a glow about you. And I have another video about vibe, which I'll link under this video or along with it somewhere. Um, and how important that is. And I, I work with people a lot on vibe. It's something that can really send a communication, a kind of, you know, power, as you walk into a room, as you're not even saying anything, certainly as you're talking and saying stuff, it all goes together. But it's really, really like overlooked in a lot of, you know, of these types of content and trainings, I would say. So, and of course, the more that we are back to being present, the more we can listen and read people and have empathy and sense what's going on with them in order to build a better connection, which will help to build rapport and create that positive lasting impression. And hopefully if it's right, create a relationship of some kind further down the road, whether it's personal, professional, whatever. Now for tip number three, I hope it's tip number three, uh, show genuine interest. This is really quite important and this can be really, really impactful. Bringing that presence, right? And that present momentness into interest into what somebody is not only saying, but being curious and finding out about them. Uh, this, this just always works. Uh, when I work with people that are shy and socially anxious, you can get a lot of leverage out of this. Of course, one of their problems is not sharing enough about themselves, which we'll get to a bit later because we kind of do want to share about ourselves and have some kind of form of vulnerability. It doesn't mean sharing your deep, 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 darkest secrets, but we want to be sharing, but you actually can create uh, a really good connection, make a really good impact by showing genuine interest asking insightful questions, paying attention to details, what they're saying, asking about those things, right? If they have kids, their kids' names, what their activities are, all comes into conversational threading as well. Something that I help um, people a lot with and have trainings on and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, people do appreciate that interest and that listening when you do that. And there's a value in that because there are people out there that won't listen. And even if they're the type of person that doesn't maybe do that back, that's okay. Um, because you'll be in front of people that do that back for you, want to know about you, want to ask you questions, right? And create that mutual connection. Not that maybe somebody is more outgoing than you are, let's say, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. And you're a little less outgoing. You can still become great friends, right? We've all had those friends. Uh, for me on my journey, I used to be a lot less outgoing than I am. I really worked on that. Um, I even became less introverted. I took the Myers-Briggs before I went on my first chunk of my social journey. And it was like at 71 out of 100. And I remember like a couple years later taking in, it was like 10. I had actually moved to becoming like almost an ambivert, which is right in the middle of that scale of introvert to extrovert, right? So we can actually change these things. I did it. I know I, I did the test, right? The online test. So genuine interest will never go away. Curiosity is another way to say it and paying attention to those details. Not only that, remembering those details next time you might see them is going to continue to build that bond. But certainly if you do it the first time you meet, it'll also make an impact. Okay, on to tip four is empathy and understanding, the all-time favorite. <laughs> it's really important and it's really, really subtle, but really powerful, right? Um, I had a client a few months ago who was new to being social, even new to this country, really great guy. And he, people liked him. He's very likable, good vibe. But one thing he ran into was when he would get into conversation with people and they had different habits than he did. And this was around eating habits, he started to give them advice, right? And what he started to notice was, of course, people were starting to like <coughs> tighten up and not really respond well to him. Well, I had to teach him that you don't want to do that, right? Uh, with people in general, uh, unless you have like a deeper friendship with them or one where you give each other advice or help keep each other accountable. We want to show empathy and understanding for whatever it is they're sharing about, especially if it's something tough or they're struggling with, 
right? And and sort of acceptance would fall in this, right? I guess like he was a little more on the, you know, being accepting of other side of things. And certainly that plays into this. And empathy and understanding is when somebody is sharing about a struggle or something. Ah, oh, I just had the worst day, you know, instead of going, well, you know, just pick up your energy, put that smile on your face, right? That would not be empathy. <laughs> that would be like advising, trying to make them better, which isn't necessarily bad advice, but if people don't want it, it's just going to bounce off and it's going to create resistance. It's actually going to make you kind of look like a jerk. Ask me how I know I've tried it. People have done it on me, whatever. So it validates them, what they're sharing, their emotions, shows emotional intelligence, right? And can make you more memorable and likable. That feeling of, oh, I'm sorry to hear that, right? Oh, I get it. Oh, I've been there, right? And it's just a little statement like that that is all you have to say. Sometimes you may or may not share a story back. It depends. Uh, but generally, you really don't have to. It's just kind of an acknowledgement. And you actually want to feel like, oh, I get, you know, kind of you feel that empathy. You actually feel it in your body um, as well. You know, people say show empathy. Yeah, you can do that. Or you can be empathetic and kind of feel that a little bit. Not you don't want to take it on like their emotion, but just be like extend that. Uh, loving kindness, as the Buddhists would say, compassion feeling. And it's never about taking on their feelings. That's what empathy is not about. It's about feeling for that person that they are struggling or suffering. It's quite powerful, subtle, but powerful. Okay, on to the next one. We're talking about genuine compliments. We don't want to just give any compliments, right? We want genuine compliments. And that could be anything for achievements, if it's appearance or personality trait, it should generally be something that they put effort into or not generally, it really should be. I've actually done quite a bit of coaching um, in dating for people. And especially when it comes to men, there can be a tendency to give a compliment to a woman. Oh, your eyes are so beautiful. You're so beautiful. Well, those compliments don't land well. Why? Why don't they land well? Because they've heard it all before. And as human beings, we for the most part, really don't value things we don't put effort into. So if you compliment somebody, or in this case, if I was coaching a guy around, yes, an outfit that she put together, you know, if, if it was a skirt she's wearing, that's something she had to probably put effort into, right? Maybe she got it as a gift, but likely not. Okay. She, and what I know and understand about women that really, you know, dress well and all that, it's a lot of detail and time and attention that goes into it, right? I put a little bit of attention into it in, in my life, probably more when I lived in New York City, more image conscious than Colorado. And it takes effort and energy. And I didn't even put in a 10th of the effort or 20th of the effort that women or some of my more fashionable male friends did, right? They really, really, and it's like a skill set. And so this just goes to, if we're talking about appearance, you want to pay attention to something that seems like they had put effort into, right? Um, all of that. Now, personality traits are different. Things that aren't so appearance focused, it just gets you into hot water a little bit, it gets you on kind of the wrong road, okay? If, if it's too much on appearance anyway. Um, qualities about people, right? Things, things they exhibit, character traits, same thing as personality traits. So we don't want to, you know, be searching and going, Oh, I need to make a compliment. I need to say a compliment. No, it'll naturally arise as you're paying attention and showing that genuine interest in people, right? You'll find spaces to do genuine compliment. In fact, this past weekend, I was at, um, kind of a gathering event at a house and somebody I had noticed, she was such a great storyteller and really naturally funny and really expressive. And it was so authentic for her. And I said, Are, do you, have anybody told you you could be like a comedian? Like the, and the way you tell, the way you tell stories, you're like a storytelling comedian. You're so expressive and funny naturally. And your energy is great. She's like, no, no one's told me that. And I just said that. And I, I don't I wasn't, I guess that was, that is a compliment. It's just something I noticed. And really I was struck by, which made it genuine for me to express back to her. Does that make sense? So we want to pay attention to what we're struck by something that interests us, that stands out to us. And then we sort of throw it out there and see. And 
you know, we want it to be positive, right? Generally, because <laughs> if you notice somebody be like, you know what? You would make a really great janitor. Just the way that you clean up stuff, uh, maybe not the greatest compliment, <laughs> even though it's genuine. We want it to be in a positive direction, something that would, you know, uplift somebody. Maybe that would work for somebody, but probably not. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I have to say on compliments. And by the way, check out some resource links I have for you below. I mentioned that video I will put there. Uh, there's free eBooks, workshops, master classes, all these types of things, including stuff around shyness and social anxiety, including more stuff around confidence, charisma, communication skills, making that impact as well. Got more stuff on that. So I really invite you to check it out. And I would love to have you drop a comment below as well. Hear your thoughts at any point in this video, including right now. How's it going? Any questions, any thoughts, observations, insights, would love to hear from you in the comments below. And next up we have be authentic. This is the fifth tip. Yes, authentic is really important. And people can sense if we're being fake or trying too hard, it can be a major turnoff. Something I definitely help people with as well. Because we want to have that confidence. And when we're working on confidence, look, sometimes we got to push our comfort zones and it feels inauthentic. But it's actually authentic because it's what we desire deep within, right? We desire to be more confident, more expressive if we're not better socially with our communication skills and whatnot. So, yes, there are core personality traits that are your strengths and that you want to bring out. Uh, and being authentic can also mean sharing about you know, little weaknesses and things like that as well. Generally, when we're first being social though, we want to keep things lighthearted and fun, not serious. Okay. It depends on the context. If you're going to some deep, you know, weekend spiritual event, that's a different thing, right? But for a lot, most social situations, especially in the Western world, it's not going to be like that, right? Probably Eastern world too, business world, whatever, right? So being authentic is not trying to, a lot, a lot of times it's just not trying too hard not trying to make a good first impression, but applying all these things that I'm talking about, all these tips, you will make a good first impression. And again, don't be afraid to show that vulnerability. And it doesn't have to be on major things. It can be like, you know, if you say something awkward, a lot of times people, when they don't understand this stuff, they'll be like, you know, they'll kind of like cringe and like clam up and then get quiet. You could be like, Ooh, was that awkward? I shouldn't have said that, right? You can say that as long as you say it in a way that you're not beating up on yourself, you're kind of carefree about it, right? That's very vulnerable and authentic at the same time. It's totally okay to do that. I still do that. We all can make mistakes, right? And people that are naturally social and good at this stuff, you know, just naturally and didn't have to learn it. Like I had to learn it. Like you're having to learn it, do that stuff. They're, they're far from perfect. They're okay with their imp imperfections fundamentally. Right? Everybody has insecurities and everybody has ones they want to hide too, even those most social people. But generally, they're very real like that. They're not just only trying to show the best version of themselves. We want to demonstrate those good qualities. They're also showing the more, the less good qualities, right? Which makes us human. Really important in connecting with others. Okay, and for the sixth step, sharing about you. I want to focus in on this. This is really important. Yeah, I just mentioned that. But this can also be making sure you share about your life, about your day, experiences you've had in relation to whatever the conversation is going on, right? If you're talking a little bit about work, you know, or if you're in a work situation, you definitely are, uh, your thoughts, things like that. When people come to me with, you know, the social anxiety shyness bit, a lot of times they can struggle with this part. They actually can listen, right? Of course, and ask questions. And sometimes that's a protection mechanism. And so I have to sort of coach them to do more of this sharing of themselves. Yes. Knowledge expertise, of course, is going to be really good in a business situation for in more social situations, more about how we view the world experiences we've had. You don't have to be a great storyteller. I just recently, recently talked with someone about this to, to be engaging and share about yourself. But if, if we don't share about ourselves, people kind of are like, ah, I don't, can't really feel this person. There's something I, I'd like to know more. They're not really sharing because it's fully possible to ask all these questions and not ever share anything. Now, now here's also a thing you actually can, uh, create 
a really great impression by doing all the previous stuff and not doing very much of this. You really can. You really can. can. And Bill Clinton was known for this. Whatever you think of him politically, I'm apolitical on this, but he was known for having this charisma based on the fact that whenever he talked to somebody one-on-one -on -one in a conversation in a room, and by the way, he wasn't afraid to look at the room and have a big presence, he had this way of making that person feel like they were the only person in the room. And there could have been tens, dozens, hundreds of people in the room, who knows how many people. And he would also remember specific details, especially from the last time that he talked to them, specific names of their kids, what happened in their life, and people were just blown away. Now, of course, he had some authority eventually, but I think this was even pre-presidential, but certainly as presidential. So the more that you, you know, get into social groups and situations and recurring social situations, you know, the more you know people, that gives you a natural authority. And the more that you add that with sharing, you know, um, asking and remembering details and sharing about yourself, the more people are going to feel impacted by you, remember you, if that makes sense. And coming into the seventh tip here is play the connector. This is a, a bonus ad in a way. You can really create value and make an impact in all social situations by connecting people with common interests or needs. That means you actually have to kind of be thinking in your head and paying attention to those details from the genuine interest tip to map. Oh, I just met, you know, Sylvia and Sylvia likes to go biking a lot. And then you meet Gerard and Gerard likes to go biking. Right. And they're both looking for other people to bike with. Boom. You're like, Hey, I just met Sylvia. You should meet her. She's really into biking right? You keep track of that stuff, whether in your mind or you can actually write it down too, if you're new to this. And that could also be professionally, of course, that's going to make sense. People are looking for a new, new work, job, career, switch career fields, start a business, more clients, whatever, right? This is called being the hub and Malcolm Gladwell, I believe it was in the book, think, um, is it, or blink, sorry, blink. He talks about people who are hub connector types, and how they are really just by doing this alone are really, really uh, successful, making a lasting impression and impact. And they're kind of these movers and shakers that like funnel people and connect people, right? This hasn't been my primary um, archetype. Mine's been more the maven. Having a lot of passion and interest about many things is my default one. However, I, when I do turn on the connector, amazing things can and do happen, right? Um, and so it reminds me, I, I'm not in a space where I'm, well, I'm starting to get into a space where I want to expand my social networks again and add on some. And this is reminding me, this great reminder as I, as I make this, that I, I did this actually when I first moved back to Colorado in a big, big way. I went hard at this and met like 200 people within a year. And I talk about it in one of my former master classes as well. So you don't have to do this, but it's really can be like, exponentially powerful if you do this because it ties right into showing that interest and you're really thinking about people and trying to match them up again you don't want to be like too try hard about it you don't want to overdo it right you want to be authentic and genuine and not like hey guys you know and like really really try 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 hard that's that's something that needs to be tuned in and calibrated but doing this is definitely a big big uh, beneficial thing it can make a lot of impact and so if you'd like to explore my personal help in upgrading your confidence, your charisma, communication skills, so that you can win more, succeed more, enjoy more, whether it's at work, expanding your networks, and that's personally or professionally, it could be in your love life, just all of life or all around, actually all together, which is my favorite to help somebody kind of upgrade all areas. Usually there's one particular area that people really want to focus on, but the way that I work with people is very holistic and all areas tend to expand at once. I love doing this type of work with people, then you can apply below for coaching. You can check out testimonials and some case study interviews as well. I'm trying to grow more of this over, over the years. I've coached a lot more people than that. And it's sort of an extra task, right? To say, Hey, you know, mind if we, um, you know, do an interview and stuff. And, and it's really powerful to see what results are possible and just to help inspire you. So if that's something you're interested in, uh, go ahead and click on the apply link and we can discuss your situation if or how I can help you out and the, all the details of what a customized coaching program would look like for you. So in completion here, by cultivating your presence, showing that genuine interest, being authentic, having empathy, understanding, and even acceptance that I added into that 
tip, giving those genuine compliments, sharing about yourself. And the bonus, you can play the connector as well. All these things added up are massively powerful and you can create that impactful value, make that impact in social situations. This will help you, help you build new relationships and open doors for new opportunities for you. And remember, creating value, even though it's great to get all your stuff, which is what is eventually going to happen, it's really all about coming from that value-giving place. So when you approach social situations, whether they're in business work, right, professional, or if they're more, you know, that personal side of things, life, maybe it's dating type situations, when you come from that abundant kind of generous giving mindset and that you're there to really help somebody have a good time if it's right on the personal side or really make a difference and impact and help the team along at work, you'll be remembered for all the right reasons. So until next video, thanks so much for being here. Remember to like, subscribe, and share with people if this has helped you out. Check out the resources below as always. And until next video, we're complete. See ya.